Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Muhyiddin Yusuf. I'm a PhD student uh, with the University of Minnesota uh, in the Shannon Lab Brilliant Group. So today I'll be giving a talk on dynamic selection of quality related traits uh, based on image uh, tool analysis in potatoes. I believe we've all had some challenges that associated with potato due to ploidy and some tools available for potato. Uh, so today I'm just gonna be telling you about the important quality traits that is uh, important uh, for uh, different market class in potato and for different end uses. So uh, potato quality traits, uh, aside from um, yield, are uh, very important target traits for improvement in potato breeding. Uh, this is because uh, it is dependent on different market classes. Uh, for example, the, or the, the, the color trait, like redness, is very, very important or specific to the fresh market class due to some of the antioxidant properties uh, that, is, that is gotten from anthocyanin, and also for baking as well as for cooking. Then also for the short traits like um, the, 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 the roundness or the length width ratio, they, they are very useful for the processing market class uh, for chips, for making chips and for maybe uh, making uh, fries. So this, Traits have not been very effective uh, for uh, using visual skills for improvement. Uh, so uh, it, 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 it has resulted to a, a, a lag in improvement of potato. And to improve on this trait, there's need to incorporate high throughput phenotypes like uh, image-based analysis to increase uh, the selection precision and improvement. So therefore, in our lab, we've been able to develop an image tool. Uh, this is just like an image box that is set up with a camera. It, it helps generate the images we use to analyze the different quality traits. Uh, this is just, this is the paper here that uh, describe in details what this tool is all about and how it works. And the data that you see that is generated from this tool has been validated against the visual score and it has been significantly it has significantly outperformed the visual the traditional visual score. So therefore, the goal of this um, work is just to estimate and characterize uh, the genetic uh, variance component using markers. Also, we wanted to see if genomic selection can predict this um, quality trait very well, and also. We're trying to incorporate the effect of non-additive. The, the, we're trying to see the implication of non-additive effects in uh, predicting these quality traits. So to start with, uh, our, our materials were like uh, evaluation tri trial evaluation for three years uh, for one one hundred and thirty four chips and it it one fresh market class varieties including chips. This was done in an augmented design and as a row column uh, information. So the traits we looked at is um, redness and lightness, which is a color trait. The shape trait is the roundness and length width ratio. So we incorporated non-quality uh, trait, which is yield and security, because one of the um, uh, objectives of this, uh, uh, one of the objectives is to also carry out um, in this selection so that we can select good or top performing clones for the chips market class. So these two traits are in combination with maybe roundness are, are good uh, traits that is being looked out for in a chips market class. So for our genotype, uh, for this is this is the distribution of all the traits that we that we looked at. We were able to like remove the outliers from this um uh, uh from, from the trait from the we, we removed the outliers, which mostly are like two standard deviation, two standard uh, away from the mean. Just like uh, 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 the, the former presenter said, it's good you look at your data and be sure that you're removing outliers from your uh, uh, data set. Uh, so uh, the genotyping we use was uh, for, we used two uh, sets of markers, one high density, one low density. I, I, I think we heard uh, Jeff talked about how we could do this computation. And this has been, this is just the application. I think we are more like, uh, and use all consumers of these tools. Thank you very much Jeff, for providing us the opportunity to do this. Um, so I use the polybrid uh, to carry out the, uh, the imputation and measuring of these data sets. 
And after quality control and removing 5%, um, uh, uh, with uh, minor low frequency for 5%, we were able to get 21,000 markers for downstream analysis. So for our uh, analysis, we use the page-wide package again, um, that is similar of depth and its dependencies. We're able to generate uh, the additive uh, relationship matrices for both additive and dominance um, 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 metrics uh, from stage-wise. And also, we implemented the two-stage um, approach in stage-wise. In stage one, we generated the blues, the various covariance that we included in stage two, and also the process irritability. So in stage two, we are able to uh, decompose the various components with and without markers. And also we, we compared the use of additive only and additive plus non-additive, additive plus non-additive model to see how we can improve estimation and prediction of this uh, trait. Then we generated uh, blobs and we also estimated the reliability using uh, prediction with markers and without markers. And this is this is the the base equation we use for our prediction before we incorporated other covariants. So after that, we were able to we're trying to see. I was trying to see. Uh, so it's just a cross validation that I did for uh ten cross ten cross uh, ten foot cross validation, uh which you, for five. Five replication for five replication, and we check the prediction ability uh, by correlating the predicted with the original phenotype. So, just to show the model configuration for additive additive co additive covariance only, and also we look at additive plus non-additive and the non-additive, as as many of you might know, in 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 stage wise can be modeled in two ways. You could use the dominance as covariance, or you could use the genetic residuals as independent. And this we're trying to compare to see if there's a kind of improvement also in our prediction or estimation of genetic variance. So to, moving to the results, um, this is just the broad sense irritability for the traits. And you could see we have moderate uh, irritability across years, and the, the irritability differs uh, based on market class, and also that's based on for roundness, it differs for based on market class. And from this, we can see that there's uh, a potential for improvement for this trait. And this is the various, various decomposition, uh, various decomposition of, without uh, markers. And uh, we'll see how, not, how uh, this might not be as reliable as we might expect from the composition with markers. So moving on to the marker decomposition, you could see that we were able to compare different uh, models and see the effect of non-additivity in improving estimation of this uh, uh, various, co to various components for total genotypic value. And from here, we could see for the uh, uh, color traits, you could see that we have uh, no effect of non-additivity in the, in the estimation of these uh, uh, variants. You could see for the for the additive only model, which is D, you can see it's forty seven point three percent, and including either of either of the non additivity doesn't uh, significantly improve or decrease the estimation of this uh, um, um, components. So we also uh, the lightness is also similar to redness, which is also a color trait. But for roundness, you could see there's a lot of things going on. A lot of things going on based on use of non-additivity and uh, this is very important for a breeding program for breeding program depending on the objectives of the breeding program if you're trying to develop the cult if you're trying to develop cultivar or you're trying to uh improve your population to select parent you be careful to select to be able to select the appropriate model to use for your breeding program so uh this is just for fresh market class and in the and the chief market class which we did separately again you could see that a lot of things is going on with the um uh, with the non-additivity for yield market for yield, which we already know is affected by uh non-additivity. It helps to improve prediction, but here we're not seeing where it's not affected like they, we can see that there's more dominance for yield, there's more dominance uh, estimation for yield, but when 
we use the residual, we could see a bit of additivity for 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 in the prediction, and also this also uh, has implication for our brain program depending on what the objective is. So, uh, well, after we looked at AIC, we were able to like uh, choose the best model uh, to uh, proceed with for total genetic value estimation. And also, we compared the um, we compared uh, predicting with markers and without predicting without markers. So you could see from this graph that using markers help to help to give more reliability in the prediction we're making. You could see uh, for color trait, uh, marker was giving more reliability compared to the use compared to the use of baseline phenotypic uh, model. Uh, but you could here in some traits uh, have high correlation with whether using markers or, or, or not using markers. So it felt like specific gravity you could do fine with just pre predicting without markers alone. Uh, this was estimated from uh, the error, uh, uh, error prediction error variance that we estimated from our data. And also we looked at the prediction ability for all the traits and how to see how, if it's been affected by non-additivity. Uh, for the color trait, as expected, we're not seeing any significant improvement based on non-additivity. But uh, we could see for roundness, there's a bit of there's a bit of improvement in prediction. But this might be due to a lot of factors, including population size. Uh, as we see from the uh, early, earlier presenter, that talked about the various factors that affect prediction. One of these might be uh, population size or factor density or LD. But we'll, we'll see. So we'll try some things out to see if. Um, increasing population size might help improve prediction of these uh, traits. And we use data set from an Enma 2023 for yield. And this was about 600 individuals that were included in those data set. And we could see the estimation of, uh, we could see the uh, various, components, uh, uh, various components that we estimated earlier. We could see a significant improvement by up to 50%. And also for the uh, prediction, you could see a, a lot of uh, improvement by in the prediction of these um, um, traits by up to 50%. So I, I, I think optimizing training population for prediction helps a lot in, in making a prediction for this trait. So with that, I would like to conclude um, this presentation by saying uh, combining image analysis with um, genomic prediction uh, is, can, can present a, a promising future for, predict, for improving potato quality traits. Also, the various components that will characterize shows that there's potential for improvement for these traits. And as well, um, the quality traits, especially for color, are mostly additive and show, they show that they can be used as for causes protein and uh, development of more customers. Then uh, increasing population size can help, can help improve the prediction of these traits. So I would like to just acknowledge Channel Lab, Braden Group, and Jeff, uh, University of Wisconsin and other people that have contributed uh, to the efforts in um, producing this work. Uh, to for qualifying. Thank you very much.